Number nine, aqueous hydrogen fluoride, which is hydrofluoric acid, is used to etch glass and to analyze minerals for their silicon content. Hydrogen fluoride will also react with sand, which is silicon dioxide. Letter B, the mineral fluorite, which is calcium fluoride, occurs extensively in Illinois. Solid calcium fluoride can also be prepared by the reaction of aqueous solutions of calcium chloride and sodium fluoride, yielding aqueous sodium chloride as the other product. Write complete and net ionic equations for this reaction. Okie dokie. All right, so we're now starting to dive into net ionic equations. All right, now in order to get a net ionic equation, we won't go in too much for right now because we're not there yet, but in order to get a net ionic equation, you first need to get a regular balanced equation. We have no equation here, so we need to get a balanced equation. So the first thing is, is that I'm just going to write my regular balanced equation. Now, if I just read through this again, it said that solid calcium fluoride can be prepared. Another um, word for prepare is made, right? If you prepare something, you made it, you formed it. So calcium fluoride was made, and if you make something, you are a product, right? So calcium fluoride is going to be a product by the reaction of aqueous solutions of calcium chloride and sodium fluoride. Once I combine these two compounds together, I will make calcium fluoride and I will yield aqueous sodium chloride as the other product. So there are your two products, calcium fluoride and sodium chloride. These are your reactants. So let's just uh, start writing it out. So I know that we have calcium chloride is going to be reacting with sodium fluoride, right? The reaction of those two guys will yield, remember, the yield is just telling you what you will produce, so that's the arrow sign. We're going to yield the product that they're talking about, right? Calcium fluoride and the other product, which was sodium chloride. Okie dokie. All right. So we have kind of the basis. Now we just need the actual chemical formulas. This is going back to knowing how to make a formula, right? Let's just do this quickly. Calcium chloride. Calcium on the periodic table is Ca, right? And calcium is in group two. So it's a two plus charge. Chloride is chlorine, right? So that's Cl. And it's in group 17 or 7A. It's a minus one. We crisscross these to tell me that I need two chlorines and I need one calcium. So calcium chloride is always going to be CaCl2. Now they tell me that, let's see, they said that it was uh, aqueous, right? Calcium chloride was aqueous. So I have to put an AQ here. Plus, now let's do the same thing for sodium fluoride. Sodium is in group one on the periodic table, so that's a plus one. And then fluoride, fluorine, is the F, and F is also in group 17 or 7A, just like chlorine, so it has the same charge. We crisscross, right? This one tells me that I only need one fluorine, and this one tells me that I only need one sodium. So it's one for one, so this would be NaF. And this is also aqueous. So that's cool. And now this will yield our two products. So we already know that calcium, if we're making calcium fluoride, calcium was a two plus, so Ca two plus. And fluoride came from fluorine. We already did that. That was a minus one. So crisscross it out. The two tells me that I need two fluorines and the one tells me that I need one calcium. So it would be CaF2, and that is, uh, let's see, 
Here's calcium fluoride. They said that it was going to be a solid. So I need to say an S, right? And then plus sodium chloride. Well, sodium we already found out was a plus one, and chlorine is a minus one, right? So we have Na plus one and Cl minus one. This one tells me that I need one chlorine. This one tells me that I need one chlorine. So one for one, this would just be NaCl. And let's see, they said sodium chloride was aqueous. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. So this is a start of our molecular formula. We just need to make sure that it's balanced. So just pick your, the elements that you see that kind of look a little funky. So maybe I'll start over here. I see that I have two chlorines on this side, right? I have two CLs, but on this side, I only have one chlorine. So what number am I going to have to put it in front of here to get to two chlorines? Well, one times two, right? Has to be a two. Now let's see. That means that I now have two sodiums on this side, on the product side. So I go over to my sodium over here and I only have one. So that means that I have to put a number here. What times one will tell me two? Oh, I know that I need two of these. And then this tells me that I have now two fluorines. So I keep like piggybacking off of the number that I just wrote. But if I notice over here, I do have two fluorines, so they're balanced. And then just to quickly, quickly look, I have one calcium on the product side, and I have one calcium on the reactant side. So now we have a full-blown molecular formula. Okay, so um, I don't really know what they mean by complete. They probably, they might even mean, you know, complete molecular formula, complete balanced equation. What I'm going to think that this is, is they probably want the complete net ionic uh, the complete ionic equation. So let's just, um, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just erase the names because I just need a little bit more space, but I don't really need too much. The main thing here is that when we're starting to get into ionic formulas, you need to have the charges. That's why I'm not erasing the charges right now. Okay, so I'm going to keep the charges, the names we don't really care about because we have the balanced equation. And I'm just going to move this up. Okay. And just know that the first equation that you just made is the full-blown molecular equation. Molecular equations include states, so solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous. They contain the full-blown compound, um, and they are balanced. Okay, so for a molecular formula, there are absolutely no charges allowed in your molecular formula. Now, from a molecular formula, you can find out a complete ionic equation. And then from a complete ionic, you can get your net ionic. So that's the next step. We have to get a complete ionic equation. How do I do that? Now we finally focus on what states the compounds are in, right? Ever since this point, we were just writing states. But now, what do these states actually mean? And I should, you know, highlight solid as well. Just know that if you have an AQ, aqueous, aqueous means that you're going to dissolve, right? So that means that you're not going to be in your compound form. You will dissolve into your ions. And, well, what are my ions? the guys that you used to get your formulas. That's why I didn't erase them. You need this information. These are your ions. Calcium is a two plus, chlorine is a negative one, sodium is a plus one, and fluorine is a minus one. Now, whenever, you're, whenever your compound has an aqueous, it will always break down into its two components. Okay, so calcium chloride, since it says that it's aqueous, it's going to dissolve. And the split is right here, right? We know that, calcium and chlorine. So this is going to break down into calcium and chlorine. 
Just moving on. Sodium and fluorine. It's aqueous, which means that when you write the complete ionic formula, it's going to break down into its ions. And the cut is here, right? Na is going to go one way and F is going to go the other way. Now this one is a solid. A solid is called a precipitate. So you might see that word floating around. A precipitate is just a fancy word for saying it's a solid. Solids do not break down. So the whole idea is that aqueous breaks down, but solids do not. You are not allowed to touch a uh, solid. So I'll say do not break. I'll say do not dissolve. So will I break this into the ions of calcium and fluorine? Absolutely not. This only gets one arrow. You just bring it down. And then sodium chloride, NaCl, is aqueous, so it gets broken down into its ions. And the cut was right here, right? So there you go. Now this is the easy part. We've done the hard part. The hard part is getting the correct ions. But now all we're doing is we're literally just looking at our notes and copying and pasting, basically. So calcium, the ion, was Ca2+. The ion for chlorine was Cl minus one, right? I literally just saw this, I wrote it down. I literally just saw this, I wrote it down. However, the only thing that you have to do now is you have to tell me how many of each you had. So I had one calcium. So that means that I just have a one here, but we don't really write ones, right? In a balance equation, we just leave it alone. But now how many chlorines do you have? Well, you had two, right? So since it's in its ion form, I can't write a two down below here. That's not the correct ion form, right? This is the ion form. I just have to say how many I have. Your quantity, so this two, turns into a two as a coefficient. So you will say two Cl minus ones instead of Cl two. Now you just say, okay, these are together. So I add them together and you just have to stay the state, the states. So you just have to be like very monotonous and tedious, right? It's, it's a very tedious process. So I would say Ca2 plus aqueous plus two Cl minus aqueous. And then we just keep going. So now I have another plus. Here comes my next uh, compound. I know that I'm going to split them into the ions. So I know that sodium is a plus one. And then I'll just say, you know, plus fluorine, which is a minus one. How many do I have of each? In this case, the coefficient told me how many I have of each. So just watch out. But for each one of them, I had two of them. So I have to write that. I have to say that I have two sodiums and two fluorines, and they both were aqueous, so I just have to say aqueous and aqueous. That's the end for this side, so we're moving on, yielding. Calcium fluoride is a precipitate, so I can't do anything about it. I have to just leave it alone. And then we move on to the next one, plus, oh, sodium chloride was aqueous. It's going to break down into its two components. Right, and we have the notes up here, so it's going to break down into Na plus, and then we'll say plus Cl minus, right? How many do I have of each? Two. I had two sodiums and I had two chlorines, so I have to say two and two, and you have to say the state. The state. Say the state. Huh, tongue twister. Okay, that's the complete ionic formula. You're done right? It will go, uh, will, you know, get easier and faster as time goes on. Now we're ready to finally get our net ionic equation. This one's easy peasy because it's a piggyback off of your complete ionic equation. Your net ionic equation is now just summing up everything that happened here. You will get rid of the same compounds or not compounds, but the same ions that are on the left and the right side, the reactants and the products. So for example, look at this sodium, right? 2 Na plus 1. 
is the same one as 2Na plus 1 on the product side. If you have the same thing on the products and the reactants, they cancel each other out. The net would be zero. You have one here and you have one here. There's no gain or loss. So Na would be a spectator. Spectators are the ones that get canceled out. So Na plus one would be a spectator. Any other ones that I can cancel out? Well, look here, 2Cl minus, 2Cl minus. That goes bye-bye. Cl minus is a spectator. No gain, no loss. But now if I look at my uh, calcium, which is a 2 plus, right? There is no calcium 2 plus on this side. There is a calcium. However, it is not identical. There is no state here, right? So I can't get rid of that. And for the same reason, I can't get rid of the fluorines as well. They don't look identical. The net ionic equation is now literally writing everything that you don't cross out. So it would be calcium 2 plus, which was ionic, uh, sorry, which was aqueous, plus 2F minus, which is aqueous, and that will yield the product, the precipitate, CAF2, which is the solid. The net ionic equation's responsibility is to basically tell you the only reactions that are happening. Everything else is just like jazz that's just chilling in the solution. This is the only thing that's happening in this whole equation. Calcium ions came together with the fluoride ions to produce that precipitate, calcium fluoride. And that's your answer. So here is the molecular equation. We broke that down into the complete ionic. And then from there, we get rid of those spectator ions and we get the net ionic. And that's it. Guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you. Um, give this video a thumbs up or like it or whatever it is. Smash the subscribe button. <laughs> and yeah, chem is fun. I'm having a blast. What about you guys? I hope you guys are doing well. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.